we were talking about this in the car just a little while ago at how it's not necessarily what's happening like this week or last week. It's everything that's kind of led up to this point. Yeah. It doesn't matter if, if you're back in school or not. Like you teachers didn't have a break mm-hmm. really. And mm-hmm. this is a brand new first year, a brand new dynamic that everyone's trying to navigate. It's not the same and it's just very different and it's challenging and it's hard and you're tired. We get that. We get that and we see you. Yeah. And, you know, the feelings are so valid. And a lot of times for teachers, it is very different than any other profession, not necessarily any other profession, but most professions in the fact that you do not leave your work at a desk and then know that that work is waiting on you tomorrow and you can get to it when you can get to it. Right. You don't have... we. You don't have that option that, because kids in, are waiting. Humans. That's never been in education before. No. And education, you know, many of us taught that it's a 24-7 job and it, it is and it can be. And, you know, it's very different and it's... It, you know, Sunday nights are it stressful. There's a lot. And you get scared and you get nervous. And you can't and, sleep. Right. And you can't sleep and you're worried about not getting sleep because you're going to be tired because you have 20, 30 kids, depending on, it's a lot. My dad was an engineer and he never lost sleep on a Sunday night. He never, he never understood. No. I mean, well, I'm not saying that he never, you know, tried to understand or that he yeah, never Yeah, but he just couldn't. It was impossible. He never lost sleep on a Sunday night no. or a Monday night. I mean, now at certain times he did have big projects and he would, you know, lose, lose sleep, sleep then, right, yeah. but that would be for, a, you know, a period of time. Um, but for teaching, we don't just get to say, okay, I'll get to that tomorrow because you have kids greeting you at the door and you don't have time to get to it tomorrow because yeah. they're ready to learn. And so that is what make it makes education so difficult. Um, but also we really want to get into guilt and what this looks like and what could be possibly, you know, causing so much guilt to find its way into education and yeah. what this looks like for, looks like for teachers as we try not to have and put so much pressure on ourselves to cause so much guilt. Because I think that honestly... And it really breaks my heart, but I think it breaks my heart because I understand and I've been there and I've felt it and I've felt this a lot, um, that guilt truly becomes a habit of thought, just like with any part mm-hmm. of our thinking, that we're always thinking we're not good enough. We're not living up to the expectations. We didn't get it all finished today. We didn't get it all the way, we, the way we, that we wanted it to happen. And it just becomes a constant, we're not good enough. We're not good enough. We're not good enough because we can never get caught up to feel like, okay, I've got a handle on yeah. this. And uh, you say it best. I mean, where does that guilt come from? You just mentioned expectations. Yeah. Like what kind of expectations have been put on you? But you have to think about who are you? Like if you were only a teacher, then you, you could live in that. You can live in that guilt, but you're not only a teacher. And so those expectations that are put on you as a teacher aren't as important as they should be because there are so many other things that make up you and your life. It's not the end of the world all every single day. It seems like it if you live in it. That's a great point. It's because, you know, a lot of times, like you said, if my list was, if I took away everything that was teaching related, I wouldn't have much left. Yeah. Well, then where does my validation come from? Teaching. Well, if I'm not feeling good enough or I'm not able to do everything that I want to do, I'm never going to have validation. I'm never going to feel like a good enough human. Mm -hmm. But it's because my identity is so far wrapped up in what I'm doing. And so, you know, here's the thing with guilt. And I I have tried to learn. I'm not going to say that I know. We all have it. I've tried to learn about guilt. I've tried to be very self-aware of guilt. Y'all know that we are no you know, strangers to therapy and to counseling. I've worked a lot with my therapist on guilt because it's something that I think mm-hmm. that all educators struggle with, um, but especially me. It's something that I've always struggled with. And so several things that I've had to do is, you know, first of all, think about where my guilt is coming from, because I am not saying that your feelings are not valid. But a lot of times, our guilt doesn't have any validity. Mm-hmm. Our That's guilt important right there. That is, is very important. We are creating things in our... Okay, I'm not going to say we. I'm just going to say me. But maybe some of you will relate. I am creating false sense and false you know, expectations yep. in my mind right. that people don't even have of me, but I think they have of me. And that is where my guilt starts. But the problem is, is that my feelings might be valid, but my guilt is not actually valid because it might even be that nobody has those those expectations of me, but I'm putting that in my own thinking and my own process of thought. And it's not even real. It's false. It's, it's, it's really false. No one has put those expectations on you. We, we have to think... Also, I mean, 
obviously some some feelings are validated like you have to plan your lessons you you have to be prepared like that's nothing new but we have to also understand that administration and superintendents they are under a lot of pressure too and mm-hmm. they could be feeling the same thing you are but at a totally different level and so sometimes that can trickle down as well and so yeah. you have to realize that but has your administration, has the superintendent, has the district really, really put these astronomical expectations on you or are those expectations you've kind of put on yourself because you want to do the very best that you can when you just showing up, you're killing it and you don't even realize it. 